Hello and welcome to Racers Now. We are looking forward to day one of Glorious Goodwood on Tuesday the 30th of July. But first things first, that man on the right hand side of your screen is absolutely on fire. He smashed in a 33 to 1 winner of the King George last weekend, a 16 to 1 winner at Market Raisin the year before. And since March the 22nd, he is a whopping 128 points in front, one point win or one point each way at the prices available at the time of recording. You won't get that anywhere else. And that is the end of this week's smoke blowing from me to Westy. Thank you. Eat your heart out, bald Tony and four-eyed Tom. Have some, have some. Very good, very good, very impressive. Right, um, a little bit later than usual, but we are looking forward to Goodwood on Tuesday. Um, an excellent week. SD really enjoys it. Heat wave type weather down here in the south. Um, Quick-ish ground expected for day one. By the time we get to race one at 150, it was good, good soft in places on Monday morning. It will not be that on Monday night and Tuesday morning, that is for sure. Um, into this 150 then. I really like this race. This is the best race on day one for me. Um, 10 furlong, handicap. We've seen plenty of these running all season. I've always had an affinity for this race, SD. 33 to 1 winner last do, year. Do you, remember, do you remember the subsequent or, Group 1 winner winning this race? Imperial Dancer back in 2003, I think it was. Do you remember that one? Uh, no, Chairman sir. Trained. Absolute no, globetrotter it was. I don't remember that one. I remember this race I... I, tend, I seem to remember that um, what was that good horse that the Johnstons trained that was out of attraction that they managed to get beat in this race or did it win this race? Uh, yeah. May, uh, May Danny, May Down or something like that. No, anyway, they, 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 run the, they run them that often, don't they? Yes. Um, yes this they is do. the yeah, Chesterfield Cup. May Danny, there you go, won at 5-1 to one, uh, four years ago. Um, yeah, I, I quite like this race and I have got a bet, but I think we're going to let SD go first because he also has a bet. And he's the your, memory, your memory of Goodwood four years ago is during COVID. Good God, man. I've been going to this meeting since 1995. The best festival racing to go to. Absolutely outstanding dogging on the downs. Absolutely lovely. Um, and we begin with a very, very competitive handicap on paper. But the more one looks at this, I mean, this Enfajar. It, it, it won't do in handstands at Chelmsford. It won very easily at York. And I was just... I spent I spent a couple of hours on this race last night and this morning. And I have to say, I was... You don't... You're, you're looking for something that isn't there, in my opinion. I, I know, much as I hate putting a Burlington shot up in a handicap, this thing really should win, providing Jim ride, rides it correct. His ride on El Mon Jed tonight at Windsor. Good God. Went by a slough. Um, if there's one at a price, it's Killy Beggs Warrior. I'm pretty sure Killy Beggs Warrior is um, better on fast ground. I can't have Ed's going description here. It's been it's been dry in like hell. We'll come on to True Sham later on, but enjoy your owner's badges. That's all I have to say on that. This mm. thing wants uh, this thing wants fast ground. I think they'll have targeted this race. They ran it in it last year. But the ground was wrong. And some of his performances, he was rated as high as 106 earlier this year. And some of his performances on fast ground, notably at places like Newmarket, um, off a mark of 106, make him look very well treated here off a mark of 97. We know the stable of the race. Stotts on, who won on it last year at Newmarket. And I can see it running very well. So that's the way to play the race, in my opinion. You're picking some stout pensioner, aren't you? Uh, yeah, well, first time headgear goes on Killy Beggs Warrior. Well, I made a case a few weeks ago for this Arian Power. He was a non-runner on the day. I put him up. I think that was at Sandown on the account of the slower ground. He's going to get much quicker ground here. Um yeah, in, I put this case up a few weeks ago. Regular viewers, this will be a repeat for them. But made without doubt the biggest switch from one group to another of any horse at Royal Ascot on the straight track that week. Watch the replay. His chance was basically gone after a furlong. He was not whipped once. He finished on the bridle. Um, so get a big pen and put that through. Put a big pen through that uh, Royal Ascot run. He's back up to ten furlongs here, which where his best form is. Um, he's been riding over a mile recently. Ryan Moore's booked again. He is drawn wide, which is a concern, but he usually comes from the back anyway. Um, we'll need a bit of luck, but I think he's an each-way bet at 14-1. to 1. So I'm putting up Arian Power. And I've got an angle 
on another one SD. Charlie Johnston, uh, another Charlie Johnston runner, but at double the price of yours. This is 33 to 1. Loyal touch. Um, I mean, they do love this race, as SD has alluded to. Um, he was drawn out, out of it in the, in the John Smith's Cups two weeks ago, had no chance. To, um, and he was hampered in a race at Ripon last week. So, as usual, for a Johnston horse, he's been a busy boy. But yeah, forget the Ripon race, forget the York race excuses for both. Um, was run into an okay standard, good enough to see him go close in this earlier in the year. Um, but my, my chief angle with this horse is Vincent Ho is doing the riding. He's come over to the UK from Hong Kong this summer specifically to ride in World Pool races at Goodwood. So they'll want him to win at least a race. He's not got loads of rides this this week, um, but he has come over and he's been chiefly riding for Charlie Johnston. He actually rode a, a winner for him last week. Um, so I do think it's worth keeping an eye on this week, the Vincent Ho rides. It starts with this horse. Charlie, I think, has got three in it. I'm putting him up 33 to 1. SD's making all sorts of faces. But for professional reasons on my account, we're going to move on quickly and not take any comments from SD on Vincent Hope. On to the 225. SD's not having a bet in this, and I don't blame him because this is not a vintage renewal of the vintage stakes. Uh, it doesn't look great to me. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I put up this um, the Parthenon for the superlatives, but he was a non-runner. I've looked at him today because obviously I remembered I put him up a couple of weeks ago. I've looked at him again today and I've gone off him a little bit, to be honest. Um, I think it's a poor renewal. This, the Parthenon, um, he was bang made to work hard at, at Gowron Park in June in an odds on. He was odds on in a massive field in a poor time as well, according to the uh, the time bandits. I did consider Cool Hoof Luke for Andrew Bolding, who's going pretty well at the moment, really well. I think he had he had a landmark winner over the weekend. Was it his 2,000th winner or something like that? But at double the price, um, Arabian Sun for Clive Cox. Won nicely at Salisbury last time on quick ground. Second and fourth of both won next time out. Step up to seven furlongs looks fine for him. And in what looks a pretty open race, in my opinion, I'm hoping Arabian Sun, who is the outsider of the field of eight at the moment, I'm hoping he can run well and he's nine to one. I'll back him each way and hope that all eight run. Again, moving swiftly on to the three o'clock. Another race where SD doesn't have a bet. Um, this is one of the feature races of the day. This is the Lennox Stakes over seven furlongs. Kim Ross, I think, won this twice, including last year. Um, we've got English Oak in there, who SD tipped up to win the Buckingham Palace Stakes at Ascot. Noble Dynasty who's won his last two, but... At a lower level than this, a group three and a handicap. I don't think Noble Dynasty is quite up to this level, to be honest with you. I, I think I think this race, um, I think Kinross is skinny. I think the winner will come from Noble Dynasty, English Oak, or maybe the Mercer Horse, but I couldn't I couldn't put a better. But I do challenge you on this. On this noble dynasty thing, sir. I mean, why is he not up to it? I just don't think he's won at this level, has he? I mean, let's be honest about it. Is well, it, yeah, he's a look. He's he six is a year old. Girl, he, but, yeah, but, he is. So know, he's had plenty of opportunity. Um, he won, he got, he won the Criterion pretty damn well, didn't he? Uh, he, he beat Witch Hunter, um, Pogo out of sight. He he was the in the um in that race on guinea's day now that race on guinea's day this is why i can't back english oak by the way he was giving english oak oh yeah. well 13 pounds wasn't he yeah and he, he beat him two lengths now english oak might well need the run but it's all price related and i think his his collateral form i'm proud to death of him to be honest yeah, I mean, look, he's the, he is the favourite at the moment for good reason. I, look, put it this way. I'd be more against Kim Ross than I am against Noble Dynasty. Um, and English Oak, I mean, there's, there was a lot of confidence and talk around English Oak, some of it coming from SD's headquarters. But the, the trainer doesn't fancy him. Ed Walker, I mean, some of the comments coming out of Ed Walker about English Oak have not been the most... Uh, well, you're a fellow, aren't you? You're 23 points down and you listen to trainers. That Sometimes they have the worst tipsters in racing. Well, SD, um, I'm no way near as good as you last weekend or throughout the season, but I did make a profit last weekend for a change from me. Friendly soul at five to one. Anyway, the bet I'm going with is audience. SD will turn his nose up at this one as well. He's 11 to one. I just think he's a bit underestimated in the market here. I mean, he obviously won the lock, lock ins that might have been a fluke, but the right horse finished second and then went and then that horse went on to win the Queen Anne. Um, 
audience had absolutely no chance in, in the Queen Anne. It, um, there's a bit of hindsight there because that's coming from someone that put him up anti-post, but that was on the basis that there might not be many runners. But he had no chance really on on the stiff track. Um, stiff mile for for audience at Ascot is, is probably the last thing that he wants. Seven furlong is his trip. Fast ground is what he wants. That's what he's going to get. Now, we might have to carry a £5 penalty for that lock in win, um, but he's £5 or more uh, higher in the official ratings than the rest anyway on official ratings. Is 11 to 1. I think that's an, a fair price each way. Um, although saying that, is there only... I might be going mad. Oh, yeah, there is eight runners. There's a couple of races with eight runners. The next one's got seven. Well, um, watch yourself. Watch yourself because Rafe will walk the track tomorrow. You can, yeah. you can see it, can't you? Just watch I mean, yourself on that. I mean, he was tailed off. He wasn't tailed off. He was last in this last year. Yeah. Tailed off, arguably his worst race of the season at Goodwood. It's hardly... Yeah, but, but he has been better. He has been better since then. He went. You know, he was only he was second behind Kim Ross after that. You know still what he did early in the season, right? Still so if you him. if you can tell me why, Yes, D, Tiber Flow, and I backed Tiber Flow last time at Haydock. If you can tell me why Tiber Flow is less than half the price of audience, I'm all ears. Well, Tiber Tiber Flow. Um, there are there are races in the pattern which which are recognised trials for this race. The, the John of Gaunt is one, and the Criterion is the other. And he won a reasonably competitive um, race there perfectly well. I'm not sure Tiber Flow, by the way, would want the Grand Lightning quick. Um, they pulled him last time at, at, at Newmarket, didn't they? Because uh, because of the Grand, when he was due to face Noble Dynasty. Um, no, he's not my idea of the winner, but I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be crabbing him. I would much prefer prefer to to crab a horse with a with a penalty who won what was a very substandard Group One. Just an opinion. Well, like I say, Shav, the the closest horse, the, the right horse finished second because he went on to win the Queen Anne, but pretty impressively next time. Those in behind, yeah, it was a mess. Um, there's two things again. I'm, I've changed it though, SD, just for the record here. I've changed it to win only because the eight runners ain't going to run in this. So I, I, of, have, I have done you a favour there. Tiber Flow or Kim Ross will come out. Right. There is two things against audience though. I'm making, I'm contradicting myself all over the past, all over the place. Um, two problems in the against column. The hood has come off Tiber Flow. Um, audience, no hood for the first, and he's had it on for the last eight runs. It's been a bit in and out in those runs, don't get me wrong. And Rab Havlin, we mention it virtually every week. But I do think 11 to 1, even with some potential rule fours to, co to come, I think he's too big um, and he's a bet for me. Right, uh, none of us are having a bet in the 335, the Group 1 on the first day. This is the Goodwood Cup. Kiprios is 1 to 2. He's won this race before. I think he'll win again. Often SD and I probably will. He'll probably will. what I will say. I mean, I love betting without, as you know. I, know. I, I was going to say that. But the problem with betting without in this race is, I'm fairly sure, ability-wise, that Gregory is the second best horse in the race. I agree. But the issue, the issue is the way Gregory ran at Ascot and his overall profile is such that you wouldn't want to be backing him. Backing him with that, I think you. I think there's a potential he could. He could. I'm not going to say he's going to win, but he could give Kiprios a reasonable race if he's on a going day. But he isn't a bet with that, and it's it's just really a no bet. And look, don't let, don't get me wrong. If he drifted to some daft price on the machine at say 14s or bigger, I'd probably back him. Yeah. Win only. Yeah, it's just a case in this race that with Kiprios being so dominant, both in the betting and and ability wise, let's be honest, he's got a fantastic mm -hmm. CV. Who is actually going to try to win, or is someone just going to? Are they just going to concentrate on trying to be second for the hundred and seven thousand pounds well, that he's going to offer for second? Johnny G and uh, what's what's the woman called who owns those two ladies, such and such, and do the pink colours? She's a nice woman, actually. She Norman owns... Distud, um, I don't know what her name is. No, yeah, she's. Yeah, uh, I forgot her name. Posh, posh totty, but but nice enough. Um, I think they'll they want to win. I don't no, think I'm obviously they want to win. Put it this way, I don't think they'll be running for second. Mm, well, like I say, I think you know, 107 grand for second, 53 grand for third. What's happened to Trollerman? Trollerman. I, is... I don't actually know. No, um, there was something about him last week. They, um, I can't remember. Can't remember. Right, okay. No bets in the 335. Um, SD does have two bets, actually, in the 410. Um, what are they? 
the bloody prices are virtually just about back of them. But well, yeah, I had you uh, on to be back in Lord Ridderford here. Sorry to interrupt you there. I had well, you I'm not you. because because Jason Hart's had the choice between Lord Ridderford, who wins this race every year, or yep. JM Jungle, who won the um, three year old handicap here. Um, he's running nicely into form. I'd be I'd be surprised, you know. I think I think a mark of eighty nine. There's there's a bit of juice in that, and I I think he'll go very well. I I virtually made him favourite when I did the form earlier on. Yeah, I think he's got he's, he's got he's got a cracking chance. Um, the other one for back is Tattersall. I've spelt it wrong to you. I've just realised when we were doing the previous. Oh, I have that. That's a stall. That is my fault, viewers. I, I oh, well, that's the first time we've been going for since October 2023. And that is the first time SD has claimed fault for anything on races now. Yes. Um, that's a stall is a very quick course. I mean, he could get taken on for the lead with one night stand, but, but a downhill five furlong suits him. As you can see, he won the, he won the three year old dash last year. And, and Catterick's a fairly quick five as well. Loves. Loves fast ground, and I, 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 and again, I'm looking at the ratings, and I'm thinking this is probably going to be better than an 87 horse. Uh, his trainer Michael Dodds is having a very good time at the moment. Had a winner at Air today, and uh, Conor Beasley does the steering. I, I thought, I thought 14 four places was perfectly, perfectly nice. Um, I thought this was a race to bet in. To be honest, I was, I was quite happy to take Fairwind on. I'm quite happy to take Lord Ridderford on, even though. You know, he, he, I think he'll dread Lord Ridderford. I can see him returning double figures on the exchange. Yeah. Fairwind, who travelled very strongly and won nicely in a decent-looking Ascot five furlong race last time, although they did group over to the near side on that day. Um, I'm not having a bet in this race, but the Vincent Ho angle, and he's only got two tomorrow. <laughs> his, oh. second, his second uh, ride of the day is on rocking ends for Tom Clover, but I'm not putting it up, just flagging. Um, I think that's it. Is it SD for day one? Yeah, yeah. Just a quick word. I was um, messaged my good friend Paul Garrity yesterday. He said, "What do you fancy at you, Topston?" Because I went, and of course, I backed uh, about this thing that got disqualified in the dead heat. <laughs> it uh, at an average of ninety-five to one, so it cost me several thousand pounds. But the the, 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 the communication from 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 the stewards' room, and the um, the result is absolutely baffling. We you have punters going around the betting ring under the impression that the stewards, and I kid you not, must have backed the jockey. It's completely unsatisfactory, and it needs looking at. I am talking through my profit, uh, through through my pocket to an extent, but it really was not good enough. The way it was communicated. The time in which it was communicated. For some reason, when you have a photo finish, you can't call the stewards. Have you ever heard as much tosh as that? And it still took them a minute after the the photo finish was announced when some bookmakers had paid out. It did it did nobody any favours yesterday. That it finished a dead heat and it just pissed me off. So there we are. And you know what will happen? They'll appeal it and it will be reinstated as a. Of course, it does. Um, of course it does. I've watched it and it, I mean I'm no expert on you know, particularly jumps racing, but I couldn't see anything in it myself. But there's one every week, SD. We have something from, you know, from the officials every week. There was um, not many people all know this. The I think it's the Bahrain Trophy that had four runners um, that the Godolphin horse uh, won a few weeks ago. They announced weighed in. And then after they announced weighed in, they announced that it was a dead eat for third. Now, you don't get paid each way for four uh, There's only four or five runners. Don't get me wrong. There's no each way implications, but there's implications for other bets as well. Huh? Well, so, like, are you on about swinger? Trifecta. No. Tri no trifecta no. bets. Oh, God, you sound like Woodrow Wyatt. You won't remember. Well, him, I do apologise. It's not all about uh, about what you uh, support or what you bet on, SD. There is a, a wide industry well, out there. Well, that's away the from... of the trifecta. You need I've told you that there wasn't any swinger on that race. Right, anyway, thanks for tuning in. That's day one of Goodbye. Good Luck. See you soon.